Okay guys, welcome back to Teen Muscle Radio and episode number 22. Uh, so today we are joined by Vicky Mer- Merketa, is it? Is that how I pronounce Masita. it, Vicky? Masita. Masita, that's it. Oh, I should have absolutely asked Vicky prior to starting <laughs> the podcast. But anyway, we get off We get off on a comedy note, that's fine. Um, so yeah, we're joined by Vicky today. Um, and we are basically, to give you guys, so you've read the title, I suppose... Um, and you'll see the show notes, but to give you guys a roundup as to what we're going to touch on, this is primarily going to be a resource for females who are currently looking to go into a muscle gaining phase, and I'd highly recommend that any online coaches, personal trainers that are male as well, or have a girlfriend or friends that are looking to gain muscle that are females, do listen to this. Um, So it's going to be a resource to basically give out information on how to structure gaining phases, dealing with sort of the mindset issues of gaining fa- gaining phases, um, and also setting up training supplementation protocols and understanding the hormonal impacts of gaining for a female as well. So before we get into things, Vicky, um, give yourself a introduction, let the listeners know who you are, and then we'll go from there. Okay, first off, thanks for having me on, AJ. Um, obviously, you and me go way back. Well, mm. we say way back, but at least a, a few years ago, hey, um, when we both had diet faces standing mm. outside Liverpool Echo Arena for the British finals. Good times. So thanks for, for having me on here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm a 32-year-old mum of two, um, registered and qualified full-time adult nurse, which I have recently actually given up full-time nursing um, to concentrate more on my PT coaching. Um, and I'm also a body transformation coach based out of uh, Atlas Physique in Altrium. Awesome. Um, just a little bit about my background. Um, I am a female bodybuilder and I uh, compete in the athletic category for the BMBF, where I placed the British champion and then fourth in the UK at the British finals. Um, I took a year off due to some injuries and things like that last year. And I also wanted to get a good bunch of muscle back onto my frame yeah. before I step on stage again next year, mm-hmm. uh, which is this year now, actually 2017, isn't it? So yes, uh, yeah. we are actually in that new year. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, I'm also known as the, nu- the natural nutrition chef on all of my Instagram, social media and all the rest of it. Yep. Um, that's just a sly dig in there to, to let people know where they find me. Um, um, and you can get a recipe book, which is all about macros and healthy eating and things like that um, on Amazon just by searching the TNMC recipes made easy. Um, so, yeah, that's about me in a nutshell because mm-hmm. I can fit in one being so small <laughs> like I am. <laughs> Awesome. Cool. Well, yeah, I'm sure as we as we discuss sort of off uh, off record that people do know you. Um, we're in very similar circles in the people that we follow. Um, but I'm sure that this podcast, again, at the same time as us being in similar circles, I think we are we do have sort of different circles as well outside of bodybuilding. So sure. I think that this podcast will bring together a nice aura of different people that maybe haven't heard of me and also haven't heard of you, which would be very very good to both obviously build brand awareness for us and and just get this podcast out that little bit further um which i'm sure that it will because it will be a great resource so let's get straight into things so i basically want to go from square one like i do in most podcasts with any other topics um so what i want to talk about initially is when females initially look at a gaining phase it can be quite a daunting task so how do females really know that they are right now in a position to be gaining muscle and what I want to talk what I want you to sort of touch on is like is there any variables that they should be looking at or measures that they should be I guess having prior to starting that gaining phase like do they need to be a certain weight do they need to be training for a certain amount of time do they need to have a certain level of body fat do they need to be lean already you know discuss the I guess, the idea of where a female should start a gaining phase um, and feel free to sort of discuss a variety of examples in this scenario. 
Okay, cool. So um, the first thing that we can really touch on is where you were talking about the mental aspects of things when it comes to a gaining phase. Um, women, unfortunately, are not blessed with the same kind of mentality or even aesthetics that men have. So when men go into their gaining phase, they can still look like they lift, mm -hmm. um, you know, in their T-shirts and in their hoodies and things like that. Whereas when women go into their gaining phase, they really don't. And it's literally because we hold ourselves and it hold our body fat in various different ways. Mm -hmm. um, so we hold our body fat a lot more on our lower half so we can get really lean pretty quick up on our top half. But then all of a sudden we turn around and we've got a hell of a lot more junk in the trunk. Mm. So, you know, it's difficult from that side of things, which is the reason why you get a lot of females um, who want to put on that muscle gain, but they're really, really not happy with the amount of body fat that they accumulate as well. Uh -huh. um, as you well know, laying down muscle is um, exactly the same principle as men do, really. You know, uh -huh. you want to start off from a lean-ish point of view. However, we don't want to be as lean as men are. Men can get sub-10% body fat. We're talking stage lean, obviously. Yeah. Whereas that for women is really, really dangerous. And if they're competing and they're going to be at um, really low levels of body fat, we're talking between 14 and 18% to be on stage. Mm. If they prolong that leanness, it can have really detrimental effects on their hormones, which will actually inhibit um, MPS and obviously um, muscle building and muscle gain. Yeah. So the one thing that I would really advise for any woman who's looking to put on some good lean muscle tissue is start from a good lean base, mm -hmm. but don't be in that lean phase for a really long time before you want to start muscle building. Absolutely. So, you know, get to your 18% your body fat. If you are overweight or, um, you know, over fat, as we, as we call it in our body fat percentages, yeah. you want to bring that body fat down a little bit more before you start gaining as well. But again, Absolutely. don't stay in that lean period for a really long time. Absolutely. So that's where I would say you can start from. Okay. Um, the, the other side of things when you can really look at it is are you mentally prepared and mentally accepting in order to put that on. Because in order for you to put on some muscle, you are gonna have to accept the fact that you're gonna put on some body fat. Absolutely. The one thing that I would always say to all females is that you will not get fat. Mm -hmm. Your body fat will increase, but you will not get fat. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you are training and you are training with intensity and you are training to failure, because that's mm -hmm. another thing that women hate doing, they hate mm -hmm. failure. Yeah. Um, but you have gotta hit failure, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and as long as you're training with that intensity, with the amount of frequency and you're being consistent at it and you're getting your volume in all the way through um, the week and you're beating your logbook and things like that, muscle will grow. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's probably also going to be half the rate as it would do for a man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because of the simple fact that obviously we don't have the testosterone levels that you need uh -huh. in order to do it, uh -huh. um, unless you're one of those genetic abnormalities and you can lay down muscle as much as you wanted mm. to. But seriously, do put yourself in a place where you are mentally accepting that you're going to put on body fat. Yep. Um, again, as we've discussed and you've discussed on numerous amounts of times, in order to be um, putting down muscle, you're going to have to be in a calorie surplus. Mm -hmm. And you have got to be in a calorie surplus every single day. Yeah. Um, I found it myself, just as a personal example, that um, I'm eating about 3,750 calories now on a training day. No uh, way. Jesus yeah. Christ, Vicky, what the hell? <laughs> I can eat a lot of food. Fuck me. Um, Good and Lord, you're allowed to swear on this podcast, by the way. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm eating that on a training day, um, but I'm really trying to get my hormones sorted out in order to have that. But I tell you what, I need those calories every single day. Mm. And I've noticed that if I, if I get too busy or something mm. like that and I miss a meal, by, if I do that twice in a row, by that third day, I've lost weight. Mm. Um, and Crazy. it's very, very easy to do that um, by being so busy. So you yep, need yep, to be in that calorie surplus every single day. Yep. yep. Consistency is key, isn't it? Absolutely, you know, and it's not just consistency. In, uh, and we're talking about progressive overload at the end of the day, right, uh -huh. in order to gain muscle. And yep. it's not just progressive overload in the gym. It is progressive overload with your nutrition. Food, yeah. And if you're consistent in the gym and you're consistent outside of the gym, the other 23 hours of the day that you're not in the gym, um, and that obviously includes your nutrition, then that muscle will build. But mm. you've got to be in the right frame of mind in order to do it. It's going to be difficult to pack all of those calories in, especially if you're not 
getting used to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can either do big jumps and mm-hmm. put in an extra two, 300 calories overnight, yeah. which most women would go, holy shit, I can't believe I'm going to have that. But if you think about it, it's probably a bagel. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, if, yeah. if you want to put a big load of calories in, add a bagel. But mm. other people just like creeping macros up. And, it, you know, it depends on the mindset of the woman who you're going to be coaching. Mm-hmm. If they like little pushes and teeny tiny pushes where they think, oh, well, that's not that's not a lot. That's like a Malteser every day. And, yeah. you know, it, it isn't a lot. But if you have a look at it and you say, no, that's 300 calories that we're just going to go, bam, put it up. Um, that some of them will, will think, holy shit, what are you doing? Mm. And the other problem that you've got on that side of things then is underreporting. Yeah. And then these women will come back to you and they say, AJ or, or Vicky or whoever's coaching me, I'm still not putting on weight. And you say, well, you should be doing because I've just put you in a surplus and I've put you in more of a surplus. So yep. you're either not eating that bagel that I've told you to do and you're just eating that Malteser mm-hmm. um, or unfortunately you're just not absorbing the calories that, that you should be absorbing, which mm. then makes you think about a hormonal issue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I agree totally that a lot of the time, when it comes to females, unfortunately, the, the process of being consistent tends to fall down, I think, maybe more frequently than males, primarily because I think when it comes to, and this is, this is gaining phases, Vicky, so I've seen, I've seen so many girls be very consistent when it comes to dieting phases, but what I see quite often is that females do tend to, I guess, naturally hop out of eating enough to grow to than not eating enough to even sort of maintain a sensible deficit, like not eating anything at all. And that's Mm. the drastic difference between what females eat. So you have like a male and, you know, an off day might be shit, like I've not consumed enough total calories, but I've still hit protein. I'm still I'm still consuming a moderate amount of calories. It might be a little bit of a deficit for that day, but overall across the week it might not be that much of a hit. But with mm-hmm. a female, you could have like, sometimes you'll have like a 500 calorie day and then enough to grow. And it's very, very inconsistent. So I think the point that you made there when it comes to obviously being consistent with your calories, that's a very, very good point in terms of maximizing the gaining phase. Also to obviously touch on sort of the starting point that you said when it comes to the mindset, I think that is again, very overlooked when it comes to females gaining um, sure. the, the mindset aspect is something that definitely will help prolong a gaining phase as long as they're getting, in, getting into it into the right mentality straight off the bat um, because you know if they think like you said I'm going to get fat you know every every time they see the scale go up what are they going to look for fat they're not going to look for any lean tissue and I've seen this time and time again with even sometimes with clients that I've maybe not nailed the mindset, I've just not nailed it, and I'll be honest, and maybe the check-in process, the way the questions were worded or something like that, it just didn't work, and every time they gain weight, it'd be like, I feel fluffy, I feel fat, and then once <laughs> I'd nail yeah, why it fluffy, once I'd <laughs> nail it, once I'd nail it, I'd be like, no, 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 you need to stop looking for fat, it's like, you don't, you don't look for more muscle when you're dieting so you shouldn't be looking for like more fat when you're gaining like you should be looking for okay my delts are looking a bit fuller I'm pulling on more lean tissue that will motivate you um you know if you look for constant muscle loss when you're dieting that's going to really demotivate you it's going to want you to stop dieting so I think definitely the, the mindset thing when it comes to gaining is is something the girls need to work on. One more thing that I wanted to ask in terms of like the start point was, um, I guess when it comes to like females, when not to, not necessarily like comp- competing or competitive females because they've probably got a very firm goal and they probably know how to do it fairly well. But when it comes to like girls who are just maybe for in their first couple of years of lifting, they'll have like someone that they look up to and they'll like put it on Instagram, they'll hashtag goals. And a lot of the time they'll think that getting lean or getting t- more toned is going to be what's going to get them to that goal. But it's very difficult to explain to them how, I guess, that you're not going to look like that when you're toned or when you're lean and you've lost weight. You're just going to look... Yeah like a leaner version of yourself and you have mm-hmm. to gain more tissue to look like that. So how would you, what, how, what would you say to someone that's sort of like, I guess, looking up to someone, how would you sort of, I guess, word it or put across your opinion in terms of how they should 
been not getting lean to get to that goal, but actually just gaining some weight nice and steadily and then getting lean later on? How would you word that to someone in that situation? I would first of all get rid of the word tone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, first of all, I hate that word. Every woman that comes to me, I want to tone up these bingo wings. I want to tone up this ass. Okay, first of all, you're already toned. The body has got to be toned because it's fighting against gravity every single minute of the day. So you're already, if you didn't have any tone to your body, scientifically speaking, you would be a mass puddle on the floor. (laughs) So we are already toned. So first of all, women who are listening out there, every single one of you, get rid of this idea and notion of toned, okay? Some of those women that you're going to be looking up to, people like Dana Lynn Bailey, Cass Martin, uh, Sophie Avonbrink, she's my favorite. Mm. She's my favorite. (laughs) Um, And she's the one that I look up to alongside Dana, of course, because we always have to look up to Dana, don't we? Doubts to die for. Um, The ones that I would say about that is, first of all, like I just said, get rid of the notion of the the idea of being toned. Um, Second of all, actually get a picture of yourself and put it side by side. You know those comparative apps that you can do before and after pictures? Get them side by side Mm -hmm. and pose in the exact same position of your favorite person in their favorite pose. So if it's Mm -hmm. double biceps, do double biceps. And then actually sit them down and say, right, do you think you look like that now? Mm -hmm. Automatically their response is gonna be no. Yeah. Okay. Have you had four children? Yes. Mm -hmm. So has she had four children? No. She's got a six pack, hasn't she? And smooth skin and no stretch marks. What have you got? Let's have a look at them. Now, this isn't pointing out things to kind of look at their insecurities Uh because mum tums can go. You know, that's that's one of my specialties is working with um, post-pregnant ladies who have had their children. And we can lose the mum tum absolutely fine. But Mm. there is no point in saying to somebody, you are going to look like that after training with me because it's it's not, you know. You, You know, you can't do it. So... I would, I would basically say give yourself a realistic expectation. Absolutely. If yeah. you if you want to look like Dana Lynn Bailey or Sophie or whoever it is that you're looking up to, mm. then that's great to have that kind of goal. But be aware it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to be one of these 12-week transformations where you take Doris, mum of four, and turn her into Dana Lynn Bailey in 12 weeks for $99.99. You know, it just isn't going to happen. It's going to be a lot of hard work dieting in the first instance to get oh. down to your 18% body fat, yep. um, maintain that a little bit more to get your insulin response really good so you can eat a pack load of food Uh and then guess what you're going to have to train hard and heavy and eat a pack load of food in order to put on that lean muscle tissue and with that will come some fat gain but with the fat gain will come with lean muscle tissue that grows Mm. so so that's what I do the side by side picture thing works really Mm. well bit bit of honesty bit of brutal honesty absolutely be brutally honest Mm. No, absolutely be brutally honest. I mean, Sophie's absolutely gorgeous and there's a, that, that she is my idol. But let's face it, unless I pay £6,000 to get a good couple of implants, I ain't never going to look like that girl, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So, But again, that's realism. You know, no mm. matter how much weight I put on, you know, my boobs died three years ago and I always hold a two-minute silence to remember them. <laughs> I love the fitness journey, <laughs> the ones that we lost. <laughs> I think that can I think that can be uh, pretty much understood by a lot of females that that haven't got that are in fitness and haven't got breast implants. So yeah, I guess I guess that's pretty understandable for most that have got at least you know gone through one dieting process and that's pretty much it. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> diet once, boobs gone forever. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, yeah, I I totally agree with that. I think side by side is actually a great idea. It's probably something I haven't. I guess thought about too much when you know occasionally I get I get asked for a female up from a female like make me look like this and I guess my initial response is always you're not going to look like that like you are you um and, and then that's it you know maybe <laughs> sending an immediate pick stitch of them side by side would be <laughs> would be the better response and just be like nah that's not you <laughs> yeah do you know what girl sorry nah, no, I mean let, let's be honest here a woman coming to a man for coaching uh-huh. is going to be daunting on its own yeah, yeah, right? yeah absolutely and what woman does not want to or <laughs> What woman doesn't want to be complimented by a man, whether it's their personal trainer, whether it's their um, minister, their school teacher, whatever, you're always looking for compliments and you're always fishing for them, yeah? Mm -hmm. But we as coaches 
have got to point out the flaws. Yeah, unfortunately so. Just like, exactly, just like when we stand there in our bikinis or our little trunks when we're on the BNBF stage or any stage that you go on, mm. and all of the judges kind of go, right, I'm going to judge every single little part of you, including oh. your tan, including your stretch marks, including your hair, and mm. all of those little imperfections that you have. Now, that comes with building a relationship. And uh-huh. from the get-go, I am always honest, 100% honest with my with my clients. I'll take their measurements. I'll take their readings. I'll take their weight. I'll take their pictures. And I'll say, right, these are the bits that we've got to work on. But first of all, let's get lean. Mm. Let's get rid of that body fat that you hate and let's build your confidence up because you've gone from a size 14 to a 10 boom confidence is back up might have taken three months but the confidence is up we've got a good relationship good coaching client relationship as well and i I can be honest with them Mm. yeah so Mm. we've now got to that lean period and i've now said right look at that picture that you sent me three months ago with sophie or dana or whoever Mm. and you wanted to look like this now let's have a side-by-side comparison okay now let's be honest your arms aren't going to look like that by the time we we beef them up um It might be in three years, but it's not going to be in 12 weeks' time. Your stomach isn't going to look like that because you've had four kids and two cesarean sections with some muscle repair, so you ain't going to have some abs, unfortunately. might have the top two, but other than that, not really a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, Your backside, you know, and you just keep on doing these little things, but you're doing it in an honest way. And from there, men are going to be like, um, they're not going to be as honest as I am just like that because they're going to look at these pictures and they're going to go, oh, right, Uh, so, so you've had four kids. She hasn't. And then they leave it at that because they don't want to go, sorry, dude, you ain't going to have something like that. <laughs> and I think that's a part for, for you know, male coaches out there or male PTs out there is that you have to treat women just like you treat men. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, call yeah. them bros, call them dudes and everything else because it doesn't mean that you're a sleazy mofo looking at them in their underwear and going, <laughs> you know what, you haven't got a nice ass, and you ain't going to have a nicer ass like Dana Lynn Bailey if I even try my hardest. <laughs> but, you know, but if, you, if you're friendly with them and you call them dude, you call them bro and you treat them like a male client, they will <laughs> respond a hell of a lot better to it and they'll appreciate it when you tell them that they need to put on some more weight. Yeah. And yeah. they are looking good. And that when yep. they do put on that little bit of body fat and they're beating their logbook and you say to them, guess what? Yeah, you have put on weight, but you haven't put on too much body fat. And that's mm-hmm. what's good. Yeah. But then yeah. on the other side of things, if they do put on too much body fat, you've got to tell them. You've got to be honest with them. Yeah, for, cert- for certain. Absolutely, for sure. I think, if, honestly, when it comes to female gaining, has been something that I'm, I've always been about. Like, I think, you know, my approach to getting to people to gain is getting people to gain has been much better. Um, and, you know, maybe in the past, I think when it comes to people approaching me, I'd be almost a little bit more complacent if they wanted to diet when they really shouldn't be dieting. Um, mm-hmm. And I think in the initial phases of my coaching, probably, you know, there's some phases where I should have been like a little bit more stern and been like, no, you're gaining and then you need to gain and this is why and giving rationale. But now, like, if someone is, preaches their opinion, I'll be like, absolutely, for sure, you know, I'll understand it, but then I'll give a bucket load of rationale as to why they shouldn't be doing what they what they what they imagine they should is best, but it's really, really not. Um, so yeah, I think I think honesty is is best when whenever girls are looking for advice. I think if if someone's just blowing up your own trumpet the whole time, like maybe some of the advice isn't the best. Um, mm. You know, sometimes you will meet someone and they'll be like, no, like, no, you need to do this and this is why. Um, okay, cool. So next thing I wanted to go on to is basically the, the like the initial phases uh, of setting up a gaining phase when it comes to, um, I guess, let's say um, a girl wants to start gaining. How much should they be looking to gain in terms of body weight? And is there any sort of uh, top variables that they should be tracking. So should they be tracking body weight? Should they be taking pictures? How often should they be doing these? Um, just give us a roundup as to, I guess, the structure of a gaining phase. And uh, it doesn't differ much to a, a dieting phase, but but just go over things and just give females some rationale as to why they should be setting these things in place. Sure. Okay, so... Um... 
talking about macro wise, obviously that's completely personal to the female. Um, I would still like to go on to the uh, one gram of pound, uh, one gram of protein per pound of body weight, because Mm. that's obviously a good one. Um, As naturals, we don't synthesize protein as well as some of the um, assisted ones, unless you are um, a genetic freak, of course. Um, Mm, So that's the reason. Yeah. uh, So that's the reason why a gram is a very good starting point. Um, I would like to basically say that you should have more fat in your diet when you come to a gaining phase. Um, and maybe you can kind of circulate those. So on a rest day, have more fat and mm. on a training day, have more carbs and cycle them a little bit more that way. Fair Either enough. which way you're going to have to be on a surplus. It's vitally important that you get a decent amount of fats and quote unquote good fats you know into your body your omega-3 sixes and nines especially when you come into a gaining phase especially if you're coming out of being really lean Mm. and the reason for that is because when you are really lean you've downregulated all of your hormones and for women that can be really dangerous yeah yeah. um it's going to affect your um menstrual cycle um some women lose them all together and Others keep them, but they're not very good. They're not very regulated. Um, and if that is the case, it can affect your pituitary gland as well, which, of course, will affect your growth hormone. Mm. And if you're looking to put on some good quality lean muscle, those mus- those hormones, if you have not got your surplus right coming out of a lean, um, a lean phase, should we say, um, then you might not actually be able to gain lean muscle. Yeah. All your body will want to do is put down fat. Yeah. Um, and then when you come to diet down again, that your the art of bodybuilding is obviously stripping the fat but retaining the lean muscle, right? Mm, you're right. Yeah. Well, your hormones might not actually be able to retain that lean muscle, so all you're going to do is stay skinny fat when you lose, and that's one thing that you've got to be really careful about. You're not going to look good on stage, skinny fat. Not good. Not good. So, um, so that would be the first initial part of being gay. Get your macros right. Be fat dominant on um, your non-training days and then be carb dominant on your training days. But always, always, always have a good amount of fats every single day um, in order to be on that gaining phase. Um, second part would obviously have a look at your training. Um, I'm taking it that you're going to be doing some really high volume going into a deficit. So you want to kind of reverse that on your head, Um, but not do it too quick, really. So just like men would do if they do high volume, uh, lots of reps, lots of sets with some cardio and that kind of thing. Don't just strip cardio straight out and don't just drop all your reps and your volume straight out. You do want to be lifting a hell of a lot heavier, um, even going into the four to six, six to ten ranges, um, and failing on those reps. Okay. And it's really important that you do that. How um, frequently would you fail, Vicky, out of interest? Like, would you fail on your last work set? Would that be the goal? I would always, well, I mean, again, it depends on what exercise you're doing. I personally use my three big lifts and go to eccentric failure. Okay. Um, so like on my leg press, I'll do um, three sets of 12, for example, at this point in time on one of my, uh, one of my um, lower body cycles. Yep. Thank you. Um, so I'll do that. But then like on my, on my 12th rep of every set, I'll go to eccentric failure. And, right. Okay. You know, so I'll do that on that. On your squat, um, you're looking for, I mean, in, in my plan, I've got eight to 10 um, reps of squats. Um, and that's a squat variation done over three weeks, or okay. three, sam- or three, three cycles. Um, and on my last working set of that one, I mean, I'm, I want to be blowing out my ass trying to get that damn bar up. Do you know what Absolutely. I mean? Yep, yep, yep. So y- you want to work intense. A lot of these women go into the gyms and all right, gyms can be daunting and lifting weights and grunting and slamming barbells down, slamming dumbbells down. So, you know, let's face it, it's not very feminine, but if you want to get into bodybuilding, bodybuilding is not a feminine sport. No. Um, you know, unless you want to be a bikini queen and, yeah, All these that. people are interested in like building maximum tissue. So exactly. So you ain't a bikini queen. No. You've you've got to get down and dirty. You've got to train dirty, and that is what I always say. Um, you've got to be intense. If your intensity is not in your workout, then you are literally just going in and going through the motions. And what is the point? You ain't going to do anything. You need to break down muscle tissue before it will rebuild up. So um, put away your pink weights. Put away all of these rubbish that says don't lift over five kilos. Where the hell that came from, AJ? I've got no idea. All these celebrity trainers don't lift more than five kilos. Oh, Christ, I'm sorry. What, that. Good Lord. what about Not your good. shopping? What about your shopping? <laughs> it's probably right? over five kilos. <laughs> exactly, right? A big bag of dog food's 5K on its own. 
<laughs> so can you not, not can you not just pick that up are you know very dangerous very dangerous that's it what happens if your kid falls off a bike or something like that hell you can't know, pick them up can't pick them up god you know put them down those biceps are going to grow like a beast you know that be stupid anyway so going off on tangent yeah that's but fine. yeah so so lift heavy don't be afraid to lift heavy um another good piece of advice that i give it is don't just lift heavy you know, so mm. you don't just want to hit the four to six range or six to ten range. Um, you want to get some more other bits in there as well. So if you're doing squats one day, for example, you know, use like your undulating periodization, things like that. Absolutely. So yeah. do six to ten one day and then do a push pull, then have a rest. Then on your next set of legs, um, do ten to fifteen. You know, yeah. you, you're going to grow a lot more. So I suppose in, in reference to it's not going to be much different than training like a man. It isn't. Mm. You yeah, know, no, absolutely. Women do need to train a little bit differently than men, but the whole principle uh-huh. of setups, it's it's not that much different. Uh huh. Would you utilize on like accessory movements? Would you like, for example, leg extension, leg curl, etc.? Would you utilize quite like really really high rep ranges? Do you ever do anything like I'm talking twenty plus? No, or not on a anything above fifteen. No, not on a gaining phase, definitely not. You can use your accessories, so, you know, kill your legs when you're doing your um, your squats and your, your leg press and, and various uh-huh. other hack squats, you know, those are brilliant. Yeah. Um, and then right at the end, just do maybe, like, uh, do three sets of 15 on a leg extension and use your last third set as a, as a drop set just to really fire it out. Um, okay. And then at the end of that one, you can even use some... Um, fiber stretching so but do all of your, your quad extension get a really good burnout there um mm. and then just get down and stretch them you know that stretching will it, it hurts like hell <laughs> but it's yeah, really yeah. really good for tearing down those tissues even more um so they can build up at the end but yeah, yeah. there's no there's no point in going i mean well yeah, every rep range has its has its um place doesn't it really yeah, but yeah, if, you, yeah. Yep. if you're looking to gain muscle you don't want to be burning a crap load of energy you know you want to be using those calories oh, right. and putting them into your heavy lifts yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, like you said, the the, the, pr- the primary focus will absolutely be something like the 6 to 10 rep range. I definitely see that as the ideal spot. Um, the, the primary rationale behind that is because you want to get stronger. You're going to get stronger. You know, you're going to have a fucking hard, hard time trying to, trying to, I guess, regulate your volume and try and get stronger at the same time doing sets of 15 plus on compound moves it's going to be pretty disgusting to try and manage that so um i think yeah the six to ten rep range would be something nice to start off with and yeah like you said obviously you can move to like undulating things but i think primarily with if, if you're talking about you know a female that's relatively new to weight training man that six to ten rep range they could progress in that for 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 such a long time if they took a squat from six Next week, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then go up again. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They could just keep going, keep going, keep going. I see so many people just using the same damn weight every week, every yeah. week. Not even there's no extra reps, there's no nothing. Um, and you know, some of these people, some of these girls, even follow my posts. Like they follow my posts, or they follow your posts, or whatever, and they know the importance of log booking and. Ah, oh, like half the time they're like, oh, but I log it in my phone. No, you don't. You don't log <laughs> it in your phone. Don't log it in your phone. How do you log your training, Vicky? Oh, I've got a book. Physical a log book. book. Absolutely. Physical log book, yeah, pen and paper. I write out my entire program of what I'm going to be doing for the next kind of three cycles. Yeah. Um, and wow, then make sure organized. they're all done. Oh, yeah, really organized. Yeah. I do have a little point in my diary that I put it down every Sunday evening. Um, yeah. That's when I go and do all of my log booking and make sure it's done. And I write in a different color the weight and the reps that I did the last time last I did time. that particular yes. one. Yeah. That's what I do as well. Because <laughs> I, don't you hate it when you sat there on the bench and you're like right, I'm flicking back, through what was yeah. it what was it nah, and I just write it in a different color yeah. highlight it um even put at the top of your logbook um how you're feeling that day how good yes, was the yes, 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 um, yes, yes. did you manage to get two meals in that morning before you went and trained or did you just get the one in yeah, you know yeah. that might affect something um did you go to the toilet that morning actually do you know what that's really important for a female that's really really, really important that's absolutely if you go and try and squat when you're constipated, mate, that bar is not moving. Oh, wow. 
That is not moving. And if you, yeah, true, serious. And if you've had a headache for the last couple of days and you've had some brufin or you've had some paracetamol and stuff like that, or even codeine, that stuff bungs you up like a mofo and you will not squat. So, yeah, that's another tip that I would say. If you've had codeine and everything like that and you want to squat, (laughs) please don't. (laughs) No no chance. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. (laughs) Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I don't I don't think I've had much experience of that. I guess when I'm when I'm really bunged up, like I sometimes get sinusy issues. I cannot brace. Like no no bracing is performed, and like there's a lot of there's sometimes a decent amount of thoracic flexion, and then I'm like, <laughs> oh dear, that's that's just not squat today. Um, so uh, I think yeah, definitely measuring how you feel on the day has got to be one of the biggest things that 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 should feature, I guess, in your logbook and. Like you, like you said, with the whole different color scenario, I, I, I love that. I'm, I'm, I like think I put things in brackets so I know exactly what I've got to get on this set this time and what I got last time because it's partly because um, when I want to go into the gym, I want to have the mindset of I almost exactly know what I need to do or what I need to get done because mm-hmm. if I don't have that sort of pressure of beating the logbook, then I just, I just won't be ready to progress. And I'll mm-hmm. almost be a bit di- disinterested in it as well. Um, but yeah, going off on a little bit of a tangent, I guess. But yeah, females should should be still logbooking. And I um, guess, you know, you can have a logbook just like a male can. Um, you Absolutely. Know, if, My if logbook's got Superman on it at the minute. Yeah, put Superman on it, put flowers on it, put whatever you want on it. Just have a logbook. <laughs> don't have flowers. Don't have flowers. Uh, don't have flowers. Don't have flowers. <laughs> don't have flowers. No That's flowers. not manly enough. No flowers allowed. <laughs> um, okay, so... When it comes to, um, I guess, uh, maybe, hmm, let's talk about progression rates for a female when it comes to getting into the gym and getting getting those those lifts up. So have you had sort of any examples with, I guess, female clients that you've worked with or maybe yourself when you started training or, or at least started training properly, like with logbooking, etc.? Mm-hmm. Um, or, or how how quick would you say fem- females progress? And is there anything maybe females should be careful of when it comes to logbooking and progression in terms of like they might listen to this podcast and then get very excited when I say they can progress every week in the six to ten rep range and they'll go in, they'll start with six, they'll get seven, eight, nine and bang, they get really, really bad low back pain and it's over. Um, <laughs> I think h- how quickly should... Uh, or yeah examples on progression rates and anything that females should be careful of when it comes to progression yeah sure so the one thing that I'd really say to watch out for is any kind of pushing movement um, overhead chest even decline chest press that kind of thing you've got to be careful of that as a female we are predominantly stronger in our lower halves um, than we are in our top halves um, and that's uh, you know just unfortunately that's hard and, and you know unless you've got different genetics and you have got really strong top halves of course mm. um, but I know for just using myself as an example I will never do a push session without a spot definitely oh, okay. not Okay, um, and you th- that's that's one big bit of advice that I can give women actually don't be afraid of going up and speaking to Big Bob in the gym mm-hmm. yeah if you need a spot in the gym you just need to go and ask for it Absolutely. nine times out of ten the boys will just come you know they'd want to come and give you a spot on your chest press of course they bloody would mm-hmm. um, especially if it's a flat chest press you know um, <laughs> so it's, but they will do and you can't be afraid and one of the quotes that I'm going to use from um, my mentor JP is that he says if it doesn't scare you it's not worth doing mm. now a decline bench press scares the hell out of me because just unracking the damn thing is scary on its, it's own scary. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. it is yeah you know and you need a spot there in order to help you mm. um, so that's the one thing I'd say just be careful of not be careful but be, be wary you yeah, know absolutely. you are going to be weaker in your top half especially if you're going to be doing things like dumbbell overhead presses as well yeah. um, you would be probably very very strong with the dumbbells up in the air but trying to physically get them up that's going to be the hard bit so yeah. again get a spot for the pushing thing um, for your lower half, get a spot for your squat because you want to go heavy. Yep. So again, be aware of be aware of your strength, but don't be afraid to push your strength 
and that's what you've got to do. Mm. Um, other than that, unless you've got any kind of instabilities anyway, just built up, you know, dodgy shoulder, dodgy wrist, dodgy arm, whatever, then there's not really a lot that you can say, you know, don't be afraid of lifting. Um, mm. When in doubt, pick something up heavy and walk with it. You know, that's that's going to help build your strength. And if you want to build muscle, then you need to get strong. Yeah. Um, so things like farmers walks, they're brilliant. You know, walking Grip up strength, and down. Yeah. The length. Absolutely, walking up and down the the, the length of the gym. Yeah, I've, I've found. Sorry to cut you off, but I found that's a massive thing with females is grip strength. Mm. Like when I when I used to when I used to coach um a lot uh, um at the previous place that I coached at, um I had a lot of female clients come in and just getting into weight training, like lat pull downs, any sort of row, pulling movements, some pushes. They'd always complain that they're like they'd say, "Oh, my hands are giving way," or my like they they they'd just say their arms. When really it was just their forearms. So yeah, my arms are giving up. Like, so would you say that? Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Like, so you'd say like farmers walks, etc., would be mm-hmm. great for building up that grip strength for for females if they're really struggling to hold on to heavy dumbbells, if they're, et Yeah, if they're really struggling to do it. But you know, when in doubt, what do you use when you do a really heavy deadlift? Um, ooh, like 170, 180, or a stiff leg, dumbbells, like 62 yeah. and a half, 67 and a half. Yeah, do you use straps? Absolutely. Yes. There you go, you on know. On dumbbells, yeah, but not on deadlift. Not on not deadlift. Only deadlift, you use an alternate grip on a deadlift. Yeah, on an alternate. Yeah, yeah. On alternate yeah. Grip. So, I mean, that's one thing that you can do for a female is obviously play around with their grip. Um, yeah. Use alternate grips just like you would do yourself. And when in doubt, get straps. Yeah, get straps, yeah, yeah. get grips. Um, I do really recommend the uh, the wrist straps that you can get, just the Velcro ones that you tie right yeah. the way hand, because yeah. we've got really, really thin, skinny wrists. That's what nine I found times out of using straps wrist. on females, yeah. Exactly. So they really, really help, especially in your pushing movements. So when you're doing your bench and you're doing your overheads and things like that, get some straps on. Um, but wraps, so so wraps are really good for those. But you know, straps. I've just got a brand new pair of Versa grips um, oh, okay, that I got for an additional one. And do you know what? Best set best set of straps I've ever used wow. you know and um, really comfortable for females as well a lot of the girls that I have at the moment really complain about the calluses that you get on your palms yeah um, I've from, too. yeah exactly they really complain about it because you know it's I mean it's not sexy or anything like that no. is it you want to have nice smooth skin um not that I would have you know which husband or boyfriend or whatever caresses the palm of your hand don't know that but no, it, it's it, it, each to their own doesn't happen too much <laughs> no not really so you know get over it yeah. um but yeah so so those um those versa grips are really good or the or the cobra grips they're really excellent um mm. because they're you know and they come in nice pretty pink colors so you can still be a bit girly with them mm. um but yeah don't be afraid to use those if it's just your grip strength that's going or because we've got small hands and weaker hands um get some straps Get some straps, yeah. get some wraps, uh, protect your joints, obviously, um, because they are going to get a bathroom from lifting heavy. Yep. But, but yeah, that's, that's the only thing I'd say about that one, really. Cool. Wicked. Yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot of things I can relate with there with sort of the grip strength stuff and also additional items that I guess people can use to maximize things. I think it's quite easy, again, with the whole environment and do- be- being daunting. Is like when a female can't grip a dumbbell or can't do an exercise, they're like, fuck it, I'm done. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. Or they'll leave that exercise and they'll go and use something they can use. And again, like another thing that I see that I don't like seeing is the girls will come in and they'll be like, they'll look at the squat racks. They'll really want to squat because they see other girls squatting. They see it in the videos. They see maybe people at the mo- at that moment in time squatting, but then they don't. They just don't. They do something easy. So they sit on the adapter machine or the mm-hmm. leg extension mm-hmm. when in reality they get so much bang for their buck when they squat so if i do see females like that like in the in the least approachy manner i'm like do you really want to squat and then i'll just make sure that they have a rack or something and just get them in there and just say just just go for it because they can squat they know how to squat they body exactly weight, they body weight squat the to the cows come home at, at, in their house yeah <laughs> like, yeah that's you know I, I i introduced my sister to weight training a while ago and she was body weight squatting at home and she was very cautious about the bar when we initially did squats but as soon as she got the bar on her back and started squatting it was just like 
the body weight squat she was doing at home. She just needed to know how to hold the bar and be confident with it. Um, it. And and you know, just, if if you're always coming in and like wasting time on just you know the the stuff that you could be just like not doing at the moment, it's it is frustrating. But I think definitely confidence in the weight room alongside. Yeah having the ability to do the movements and having confidence with the movements is is key and like maybe you know contacting someone like Vicky like myself to get you through that first initial process of finding the movements and feeling comfortable is like mm. the one of the be, the best ideas um mm. okay so cool i'd like to sort of i guess maybe finally touch on something more um close to home for you when it comes to post competition gaining and I'll make mm. sure that I have a timestamp on this because quite a lot of females will probably want to I guess tune in on this part and some might be relative to less experienced females but when it comes to like post competition going into a gaining phase that's massively difficult so if you could just sort of I guess touch on the experience and what you learn out of coming out of the show in sort of the shows in 2015 maybe touch on some things that you had to deal with how mm-hmm. you dealt with them and any advice that you would give as a as a result of what or what you what, what you had to go through um sure. to, to girls that are maybe going through similar processes even right now yeah sure um this is one thing that i'm really quite passionate about and and i really want to kind of highlight some of these things to to women out there um i'm writing a book at the minute that's going to be finished by um christmas this year actually hopefully called female bodybuilding without the bullshit um and that is literally just going to be a lot more in depth about what i'm going to go into now so i didn't if people have followed me on social media you'll know that i've had a big um eating disorder background where i was anorexic for a huge part of my life um and bodybuilding was actually what saved my life and got me out of it um, because it meant that I could have control over my food and I could eat tons of food and still have a a six pack which is great Mm -hmm. so coming out of my show um, before I went into my show in November of 2014 um, I lost my period Mm. Um, it just decided to dry up and (coughs) disappear and to this day it has not come back So, yeah, so that is the dangers of low fat, low calorie dieting. Um, I was extremely over dieted, extremely over trained. I didn't have a day off um, from the gym or from low calorie dieting. My calories went down um, at the very lowest to about 1100. I think um, went into my first show completely emaciated um, and then basically got some good kicks up the arse and realization that I needed to kind of feed my body. Um, not so much for aesthetic purposes, but for nutrition purposes, I needed nutrition <coughs> in my body. Mm. Um, so anyway, coming off stage, the first thing that I wanted to do is what everybody wants to do when they come off stage and that's binge. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I did. And, um, the minute I came off stage, I went to pizza express with my husband and I waited <laughs> for my pizza to be cooked with a bowl of polenta chips and a (laughs) glass of wine, which went completely to my head. (laughs) Um, I got the pizzas. I ordered two pizzas for myself and one pizza for my husband. Wow. (laughs) Ran back to the car. I demolished them and I wasn't happy. So on the way back home, I actually phoned up Domino's, ordered another pizza and picked that up on the way home. Ate that, ate ice cream, cookies, um, sweets, chocolate, everything that you can imagine that I did not have because I was extremely restricted. Mm. It was lean meats, green veg. That was it, no, you know. No. So that was all I had. You know, 40 grams of carbs a day was all I was allowed. And that was including my green veg. Oh, yeah. Oh, no good. So No good. No good. So that was the first initial um binge as such then I went on I got a hell of a lot better got some good coaching behind me um and then went on to um do the British finals at at the BNBF uh, where he came fourth which is brilliant when I came off that um I actually didn't binge I refrained from it um it was a really late night so all I wanted to do was go home to bed (laughs) so I went to bed woke up the next morning went to the gym because I thought fuck it I'm awake uh, so I'll, I'll go to the gym um, and then just kind of carried on as usual. And I think that really helped my mindset to get prepared for a reverse dieting. Mm. 
The worst thing that I've seen a lot of competitors do is literally go on for a two-week binge. Mm. Um, they put on a crap load of water. They feel awful. They don't train. And within those first two weeks, they've kind of really ruined the setup for their off-season to have a really, really good off-season, especially if they're planning on competing the following year as well. Yeah, from a mentality um, perspective as well. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you go from Lost having control. a six-pack, shredded, good doubts and everything, and then all of a sudden you're the marshmallow puff. Mm. You know, mentally, you are going to feel damn well horrible. Fuck, yeah. So, you know, the reverse dieting aspect of reversing out of a show, I would say, is really, really, really fundamental. Yeah. Um, don't go off and crazy binge. Have some nice food, definitely. Mm. Have it on your training day. Yeah. And then rest you know eat as much protein and as much veggies as you want and that kind of thing but keep your carbs low and then the next day go and train and then go and have something else nice to eat you know yeah. um that balance is going to get you set you up for a good reverse um like i said you know i still haven't um sorted out my hormones from from way back when in 2015 and i'm still having issues with that that has caused um, a multitude of different um, effects into my body, including bone density problems. Okay. Um, just lifting up a bar, I broke my arm um, <sighs> not so long ago. Oh, God. Uh, and that was literally just picking up a bar, uh, oh, a very no, late, no. Uh, light bar as well, just an no O-bar, you know, with maybe 30 kilo on it. So it wasn't, it wasn't heavy. No. Um, but that fractured my ulna and has left me with tendon damage and nerve damage into my right hand, <sighs> my right arm. Um, my sleep pattern has been completely messed up um, mm. because of my hormones getting waylaid. My skin was bad. My hair was bad. It took ages for my, my hair to, to get nice and shiny again, you know, no matter how much of that lovely shampoo that it says all shines your hair overnight. <laughs> Bollocks, it does, right? Um, so I'm still waiting for the, the, you know, the shine's finally come back. So that's yeah, all definitely. right. Um, talking about libido wise and, and things like that, that is still very, very, very low. No matter how much you try and get it back up, um, you know, it's still low. Yeah. You're tired, you're cold all the time. The coldness is a big thing that you, you have to deal with as a female as well. We feel the cold a lot more yeah. um, than men do, I think. Um, and that's from my personal perspective as well. Um, but feeling cold doesn't go away when no. you put body fat on because you are systemically cold. Yeah. Um, so that's another thing that I would really be, be wary about really. So, um, my pituitary gland isn't working as well as it should be doing. Okay. Um, doctors will say, have calcium, have vitamins, have this, have that, have mm. the other. Okay. You can have them, but let's face it, science has proven time and time again that vitamins is now just expensive urine that you are buying. Yeah. So, just be careful when on the ones those, that you, yeah. exactly you know get a lot of nutrition from your food um and the one bit of advice that i can give coming off of a show and having all of these multitudes of problems that i've had myself and that's what i want to educate people female bodybuilding is absolutely brilliant right yeah, yeah. it is fun as hell it's a brilliant community to be in, um, not just from natural uh, bodybuilders, but, uh, you know, assisted bodybuilders as well. I've got friends all over the world from different aspects of it. And it's an absolutely amazing community to be in. But taking all the niceties aside, it is hardcore mm -hmm. and it is hard to deal with. You know, you will, when you get down into those um, last few weeks in the show, you will feel tired. Your legs will feel like lead being dragged behind you. You will not want to have sex with your husband. Hell, if Brad Pitt came to your door, you wouldn't want to have sex with him. You know, you'd basically say, dude, if you're not bringing any Krispy Kremes, you can stuff right off. <laughs> so you will crave food chocolate will never taste the same again <laughs> mm. <laughs> i was a chocoholic mad for it chocoholic and now i hate the stuff yeah yes yeah, not, not that good is it <laughs> no and it's just like dude it's it, if i was in a deficit right now i would kill for some chocolate birthday cake yeah but when you're in a surplus it's, it's like do you know what i can go without it's fine <laughs> yeah. I'll my egg whites and broccoli it's awesome <laughs> and then you are like the most boring bitch ever when you get invited out to your your girlfriend's hen do's and things like that no no i'll, I'll i will actually just have the salad <laughs> so rather than the full rack of ribs you know anyway i'm going off 
But there is bullshit associated with um, female bodybuilding. And if I can let anyone or everyone know out there, just that one piece of advice is really do not go in with these rose colored glasses on thinking it's all going to be sweetness and light. And Mm. it's all about getting your tan done and getting your makeup done and things like that. Trust me, by the time you go to go and get your tan done, you will be sat there in your bikini thinking, you want it off, (laughs) get it off. Yeah, exactly. It smells yeah. like old biscuits and rich tea. Yeah. Um, and your feet are stained for months. Yeah, not again. So. <laughs> exactly. So just be wary. When you go into a bodybuilding realm, get yourself a good coach. That is the one thing that I would say. There's a, a lot of bullshitters out there and yeah. a lot of bad PTs out there who will go, right, low calorie, loads of cardio, and then all of a sudden you find yourself doing four hours of cardio a day on 900 calories and feeling like shit, and you're still not losing any weight. Yep. So get you yourself... Start introducing the drugs. <laughs> That's it, yeah, right? Get yeah. some more winning in you and things not, like that. Mm, you know, yeah. there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being an assisted bodybuilder. And no, not some at all. Best bodybuilders in the world are assisted, which are brilliant. Absolutely, um, yep, agreed. But you, they still have good coaches, and mm. they still plow their nutrition they still plow their training it's not just the drugs that do it Mm. um so in order to make your prep easier eat high calorie foods Mm. eat high calories in your off season get those calories high enough in your off season so that when you do come to diet you're still dieting on 2000 calories and losing weight Mm. and that's the yeah that that's a big piece of advice that i can give you i mean with mine now my calories um, like I said, 3,750 on a training day. I am hoping that my calories will be about 3,000. <laughs> <when I can't laughs> <say it. laughs> Maybe not that high. Yeah, but, I um, mean, that is that is a really like that is a really good comment. Not to negate everything else great that you said, because that's you said some really really great stuff, and I think a lot of females will take away from that. But with the whole calories thing, I do I do massively agree when it comes to. And I've had this sort of, I guess, discussion with people before because when you obviously bump your calories up and you get them like super high in an off season and, you know, I, I've, you know, I've got mine up to a decent level. It seems pretty poverty comparative to you, but, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm about that sort of like three, six range. I don't do the whole training off day thing, which does interest me, but I don't do it at the moment. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, I got mine up a decent amount, so I, I, I'm very comfortable with where they are. But I think the the discussion I've had is like when you do diet, like when it gets tough, having more calories does definitely make the experience better. I absolutely agree with that. I hundred percent agree with that. But when it gets really tough, you feel like shit regardless. Yeah. Like if you, the only thing that I can really resonate on that I do absolutely agree with you on is the whole, you know, if you get home from a shit training session, well, not shit, but like it's horrible. Everything's moving horribly, but it, it, you get it done. You get through it. And instead of 20 grams of oats and 4 million grams of courgette, you've got, <laughs> you've got 150. Oh, yeah, yeah, screw that. I'm not, not looking forward <laughs> to that at all, but it almost certainly will happen. I'm going to be up at 10.30 at night, post-cardio, grating, that grating the courgette <laughs> into the oats, just crying my eyes out. <laughs> but volume, bro. Absolute, volume. <laughs> absolute scenes. Um, but yeah, I mean... Uh, you'd rather have that 150 grams of oats to look forward to and actually spend more than, you know, 10 seconds eating it um, than having that 20 grams and being like, fuck, my calories are so low. And you'll complain way more when your cal- when you notice your calories are so low, like you log them into my fitness plan, you're like grinding on 150 grams of carbs, like yeah. 30 fat. And you know your calories are low and it mentally fatigues you. But when you know you're dieting on more calories than most other people, you almost feel like you should feel better. You're, yeah. You don't, you don't. Because if you're lean, you're lean and you don't feel like good, you don't feel good whatsoever. But mm. if you if you are on those higher calories, you do generally just have a better better mindset and a better conception. Like I was totally like that last year and I th- I, well, I hope to God I'll be like it this year. Um, but I was, I generally didn't think my calves would come below 300 and I was like so determined that they wouldn't. Mm-hmm. And you know, at the end of the day, a deficit's a deficit, but I was feeling very confident in the fact that I could still eat over, you know, 300 grams carbs, whatever it was, don't need that yeah. number. But I was very confident in that fact that I could retain 
that those calories and still lose weight. So I do, I do totally agree on that, and I think it will be fun for anyone that that sort of follows you from this to sort of follow your your caloric drops, my caloric <laughs> drops throughout yeah. the season, um, and and see how things go. But yeah, anyway, that I guess leads me on to sort of rounding up things um, for, for for this episode. I think we've given away so much content and, and a lot of good stuff and I mean I'd, I'd, I'd love to have you back on at some point sort of maybe midway through our our preps and maybe we could sure. just talk for an hour about how things are going I think people would quite see be... how your face changes oh absolutely that would be <laughs> that would be the only reason people would tune in um <laughs> I think the, the the final things that I'd like to touch on would be um just giving your main tip so I guess your biggest pro tip to anyone that listens to this wants to gain some muscle what's your number one tip for for that female that is that is listening eat Eat. don't be afraid to eat eat and lift heavy ignore all of these people who say women need to go in the higher rep range and um, don't need to eat as much as um, AJ does it's not they need to eat they need to eat and they don't need to be afraid to eat. And again, just kind of dismissing this big thing. Don't be afraid to eat fat. Oh my God, fat girls is amazing. Yeah, not fat girls is amazing, but yeah, fat yeah. Comma, girls yeah. is amazing. The, the macronutrient, yeah. The macronutrient <laughs> yeah. fat, yeah, yeah is, is yeah. amazing. I mean, fat girls are amazing as well. As well. Yeah, of course, uh, but exactly. exactly. Yeah. But fat is amazing. It's brilliant for your hormones and it will sustain your hormones as well. So, yeah, don't be afraid to eat and don't be afraid to lift heavy. That's the only thing that I can say. And if you want to grunt like a bloke, grunt. Grunt like a bloke, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> get, those, like get those reps out, indeed. Right, so also, Vicky, I'd like you to have sort of, I guess, the opportunity to um, quickly touch on any of your plans for 2017 that people can follow um, and, I guess, get a bit excited about. And also just, again, like you said at the start, feel free to link or just say your names to Instagram, Facebook, etc. where people can follow you. Um, and sure. I'll also link them below for, for people. Sure, sure. Thank you. So um, on Instagram, I am the natural nutrition chef with the underscores in between because you can't just have that for some unknown reason. Um, on Facebook, I am, again, the natural nutrition chef, um, personal trainer or TNNC personal trainer. Um, I've got a recipe book that is now available for download on Amazon, which is called TNNC Recipes, um, Natural Nutrition Made Easy. Sure. Um, the second one of that is going to be launched um, hopefully, fingers crossed, by August this year. Um, it's in the middle of publication at the moment. And um, and then, yeah, I've got a final book coming out um, in December this year, which is all about female bodybuilding uh, without the bullshit. Um, so please keep an eye out for that one. Um, I've got some good interviews on that one as well from various different people um, and different stories. So it's not just my take on it. It is from various other people from around the world. Wow. Um, so that one will be a really good one to, to get excited. I'm excited mm, about it anyway. Yeah. So, so that one will be a, a good read and it is blatantly and honest. And, um, you know, me by now, AJ, that yeah. I'm extremely honest Very and true. extremely open. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, there's no holds barred on that book, but, um, but yeah, if anybody wants to contact me on any of those things about recipes or about more muscle gain or anything like that, then obviously feel free to, to drop me a message. Awesome. Incredible. Cool. Well, I'm sure that, um, well, I hope that you'll get a few new followers for, for, for 2017. You've got some big plans and I'm, I know that you're, you're doing awesome. You're killing it already. So um, it's, it's going to be great to, to follow that and, and obviously be a part of it as well. So yeah, yeah. Vicky, um, I'd like to obviously thank you very much for sparing your time um, this Saturday evening and coming on the podcast and giving no away worries. lots of uh, pro tips we don't say knowledge bonds I don't think don't knowledge think. bombs Luke, yeah. Luke, <laughs> Luke didn't like that so I guess we, we won't say that so we'll say pro tips um, okay. but yeah thank you very much and also thanks to the listeners anyone that has listen to the whole podcast we really super appreciate it um if you if you have listened and you have liked it then give it a like on youtube and if you have any other questions for either myself or vicky then leave them in the comment section below if you're on youtube um or feel free like vicky said to to contact us if you listen to this on soundcloud or itunes um so contact us on facebook wherever you want and that's it. So that's it for episode 20. 
two. Um, I will see you guys back in 23. Uh, thanks again, Vicky, and that's it. Cool. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.